Hey guys, welcome back to another Dragon Air Silent Gods video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about the brand new set types coming to Season 3, and that is One Piece set bonuses. Before I get into that though, I do just want to say a huge thank you to Dragon Air Silent Gods for sponsoring this video. A huge thank you to them to, uh, for supporting my channel and helping me to continue to pump out content for you guys. So if you are enjoying the look of Dragonair and you haven't already, please do hit the link in the description and get involved today. But yeah, other than that, as I said, I am on the, well, as I said, we are going to talk about the One Piece sets today. I am on the test server. Season 3 launches in a week today, so all of the hype is now coming out. We've all got access to, well, the t content creators now have access to test everything. So yeah, one of the best changes, in my opinion, going into this is the addition of One Piece sets. So... If we look here, as you can see, there is this red item here on my gloves, and that is the new One Piece sets. So, what these are is they are separate from the three piece sets we're used to, where you can get two piece bonuses, three piece bonuses. They are unique items where you can only get one piece set effects from them. You don't need to wear multiple of them, and they are the perfect gap filler to enhance your builds and take you to the next level when you're obviously combining them with three piece sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through all of them and talk about what I feel about them and where I think they might be used. So first of all, we've got Strike of the Unprepared. So this is a glove slot item and the wearer deals 35% increased damage to enemies with defense penalty. So it's amazing. It is probably the go-to bonus for almost every damage dealer as long as you've got a consistent defense penalty in your team, which you want to obviously have. You want to maintain that as much as possible. And this item will bring you a huge amount of damage. Uh, it does come in lots of different kind of stats. You don't have to worry about um, being limited to crit damage, for example, obviously that I was showing before. The way you do get these artifact, uh, these sets, sorry, is from stage nine of Grave of Venom, Grave of Rot, and Grave of Curse. So they'll obviously all drop their corresponding type. So tank support damage. So this set is from Grave of Venom, along with the other three damage sets, which I'll talk about now. So the next one we've got to look at is Chaos Symbiosis. So the one piece effect of this is the wearer enjoys 35% increased ultimate up and damage bonus effects, but has a 50% decreased recharging speed. So with this one, you're going to want to use this on heroes who are getting, are getting frequent damage bonus effect, boosting them because they're going to get a higher value of that obviously and they're also going to get a lot more turn meter boosting so if you've got somebody like for example a Shetius, on his passive skill he boosts his ultimate energy every time he hits a target with burn so he would gain more ultimate energy back from that however he would sacrifice 50 percent of his recharging speed so it does become a little bit of a nightmare to tune and um, but all in all if you're able to still get frequent turns through ultimate boosting and you're able to maintain a good amount of damage bonus effect, you are going to deal a huge amount of damage with this set. Uh, it's one I'm going to be trying out probably tomorrow. I've only had test server for a few hours at the moment, so I've not been able to test out all these cool things. Um, so yeah, that is definitely one on my list to test out and play with. Um, but yeah, it, all in all, it has the potential to be very strong. Next up, we've got Death Record. So it's a one-piece set. Once again, whenever any hero dies in the Grand Gladiator Arena, the wearer can obtain 15% of their attack. The upper limit of the additional attack obtained is 300% of the wearer's attack. So I can see this set being really good in, obviously, Arena, based on the fact that it only works in Arena. But on heroes like Quester, where they're jumping to the back line and quickly taking out the squishy enemies, um, you're obviously going to absorb 15% of their attack. And each time you jump to somebody else and kill them, you're going to be gaining even more attack. And eventually, you're going to be facing... The most likely the enemy tank with a huge amount of stat bloat. You're going to have way more attack than you went into the battle with, and you'll likely one shot them as well. So, that is a situation where I can see this being really useful, where you've got frequent death, well, frequent enemies being killed, and you can gain full advantage of that bonus. Next up, we've got the magic crystal refinement. So, this is a boost to your attack for every one skill haste you possess. So the wearer obtains 15 attack every one skill haste. So this is going to be really strong on damage heroes who you're using um, things such as like the hourglass on. So obviously that gives you 100 
skill, uh, skill haste. So that alone is 1,500 attack. So if you're using that plus, say, you've got some skill haste sets or you've got skill haste on your runes, then the potential to push your attack way higher than you could from any attack artifact is actually massive. Uh, sorry, any attack item is massive. So you can get a huge amount of extra stats from just equipping this item. And once again, I think this is going to be one to watch that will definitely be involved in a lot of builds going forward. So now onto the tank sets. So first of all, we've got Mona Lisa's Blessing, and these are now uh, chest items. So first of all, as you can see here, there is a 50% chance for the wearer to grant 50% increased healing and shield effects. So this is massive. This, this will be on any of your healers or any of your shielders. This set is truly incredible. Granted, it's not very reliable because you're not gaining a permanent boost, but 50% chance to double, well, to increase your healing by 50% is massive. And I've seen some uses of this with Garius pushing nearly 250,000 shields because of the boost and then obviously him using the staff artifact. It, it becomes a bit of a joke, really, and I can't wait to get my hands on some of these sets in the live game. Next up, we've got Impregnable. So this is a boost to well, whenever you gain a buff there is a 50% chance for the buff to be underspellable. This one's a little bit more niche. I can imagine it being really good for fights where your um, debuffs are being dispelled by a boss or maybe for the arena as well. Um, however, it's definitely going to be used a lot less than some of the others, that's for sure. Um, but if you're in a situation where you're having your buffs dispelled and it's causing you problems, then this set could be the way to go. However, with it only being a 50% chance, it's kind of a coin flip as to whether it does benefit you. And you may still find that you are going to struggle through that content um, with how you're currently doing it. And this set might not be the answer for you. So next up, we've got Iron Bastion. And this is once again a chest piece. So the wearer is immune to stun when being inflicted with one. But every second of stun reduces the wearer's ultimate energy by 6%. So this is a difficult one because they're is less stuns to worry about in season three due to the fact that stun set is gone so if you're facing against things like let's say yola or tamar or uh off the top of my head i can't think of any prolific stun heroes um then bringing this into one of your builds could be really useful but i generally think there's better items however like i said if you're stuck and you're getting well you're finding problems against uh, an enemy that's stunning you then maybe just reducing that by equipping this item could help to alleviate that pressure and help you get through the stage you're on lastly then we've got the mark of austerity oh this not last sorry we've got two more so next up we've got the mark of austerity this is a glove item so 20 percent of the damage dealt by the wearer will be converted to healing when their hp is below 50 percent aoe damage can only trigger 30 percent of this effect i personally think this is incredible i one of my favorite bonuses they've added it's kind of like a pseudo lifesteal for your tanks and i think it's going to be really strong going forward as well especially as it could see us leaning to more of a damage build on some of our tanks as well in a lot of cases i think it will be really good for kind of continental bosses and chaos shadows where you're potentially using some suboptimal tanks having that extra support to top them up might even negate the need for a healer if it's one of those Chaos Shadows, like, for example, um, trying to think from last season, was it um, Urzillus, the fire bo or the boss that you faced with fire? The only people who received damage in that was your tanks or melee if you used them. Having this could actually remove the need for a healer, as you might be able to self-sustain your tank without any need for a healer, allowing you to obviously bring an extra damage dealer in and meet your damage requirements easier. And um, obviously I can't test that at the moment because we're nowhere near that point of the season going into season three. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one to watch. I think it will probably be quite a good filler spot on nearly every tank. Just gaining that little bit of passive healing and support could really change things massively. Next up, we've got Echoes of the Ancestor Spirit. That's back to the chest. So the wearer dispels one debuff from themselves when they cast their ultimate skill. This is okay. It, there's a lot of situations where it could be useful. Um, such as Grave of Rot, for example, where you're taking a lot of debuffs. However, I think a lot of the cases where you'd want to use it, you'll be running a cleanser anyway, and therefore it's not going to give you the value that potentially it could have. 
if it dispelled a debuff from everybody, for example, it would be in. It, well, I mean, it would be amazing. You'd use it everywhere. But given the fact that it's only one debuff from the person who uses the skill, then I, I think it will be kind of overshadowed by actually using a cleanser in your team, unless you ran it on everybody in your whole team. So next up, and the last one we've got is the fish in troubled waters. Which slot is that? Where is it? Oh, it's a chest as well. So the wearer has an additional 50% chance of dispelling one buff from the target when inflicting debuffs. This is incredible. So this will be the go-to uh, the go-to item to use for Grave of Curse, uh, Ancient Battlefield, and as well as I'm sure many other areas later in the game. This will really be a massive boost to you. It could remove the need to have a debuff cleanser on fights where you'd otherwise need to so for example like i said grave of curse or uh, ancient battlefield you need to get rid of the buffs on the boss if you've got somebody who's hitting multiple times with multiple debuffs they are likely going to strip all the buffs on the boss so those are the new one piece sets coming into the game i am so glad for it it's an amazing change and um, i'm sure you'll agree let me know what you think in the comments but the only other thing is before I end the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to Dragonair once again for sponsoring this video. If you are enjoying the game or enjoying the content, please do hit the link in the description and get involved today. But other than that, I'll see you in the next video.